www.ghostbusters.org. Good morning. Hello, this is Gary Pinnell, and it may not be morning where you are, uh, but it is here, and I'd like to welcome you to our Bible study. We're just uh, down home, folks, as they say. I just like to sit down with you, or if you're in your car, or maybe your lady doing the dishes, or whatever. Um, we're looking into the Word of God and studying it together. And I pray that uh, it will be helpful for you. Now, one of the things in this chapter today is genealogy. It's interesting that genealogy in uh, Matthew, that goes only back to Abraham because Jesus, the Messiah, was through he was a Jew, and also it covers through David, but it uh, starts back at Abraham. Now, today in the genealogy that we'll look at, uh, which is very interesting, by the way, it, it goes uh, the opposite direction. It starts with Mary, because the one in Matthew really is Joseph's, uh, his genealogy. Even though he was not the father of Jesus, he would, Jesus would be considered the adopted son. In that sense, so uh, Jesus was the Messiah on two accounts by the two genealogies. And uh, the one in Luke that we'll look at is Mary's genealogy and that goes all the way back to Adam who is the son of God all right and uh, the Messiah coming through Mary a woman the seed of the woman which is talked about in Genesis chapter 3 it's capitalized there then that would mean that Jesus would be born without the sin nature that was passed on to people. Jesus did not have a sin nature. And so, I uh, trust me, I've done many hours of studying on this area of the genealogies and uh, there's uh, the different the opinions and so on, but I will tell you that uh, it, in Matthew, the genealogy is of Joseph and uh, the genealogy and Luke here that we're going to look at just a little bit is of Mary. Okay, so that's interesting, isn't it, uh, to think of. Uh, let's go ahead then with chapter 3. It says, Now it came to pass, well, actually, it says now... <laughs> In the 15th year of the region of Tiberias, this is where they were at, okay, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea. So these people are in uh, leadership uh, long before uh, even that Jesus would be um, crucified he was uh, they were in leadership before that uh, even three years before uh, because Jesus is starting his ministry at the age of 30 so who was in charge then uh, the ones that will be involved in the crucifixion the in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius so there was uh, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea Herod being Tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, Tetrarch of Eturia, and the region of Trachonitis, and Lysanus, uh, Tetrarch of Abilene. While Annas, notice here, people even three years before, and Jesus, as he starts his ministry, Annas and Caiaphas were high priests. The word of God came to John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. 
Oh, Judy, the Lord bless you. Sister in the Lord. And uh, we are in right now in Luke chapter 3, verse 3. So remember that Luke is a physician. He's a doctor. He's very well studied. He has interviewed many people. But the Holy Spirit speaks through him and helps him write down and has him write down the things that God wants him to write down for us even then this time. So now we're at verse 3 and it says, And he went into all the region around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance. This is John the Baptist. Um, for the remission of sins. So that was his main ministry, was turning hearts back to the Lord. Hello, Kathy, the Lord bless you, sister. Uh, and verse 4, As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now I'm sure that John had read this, And the Lord showed him that he would be this one that would be saying this, even from the book of Isaiah. I think of Isaiah, I've said this before, as another gospel, because there's so much about Jesus and about even John the Baptist here. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall he shall be made straight and the rough way is smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Uh, sometimes I don't think that we really, I didn't as I grew up, see the complete importance of all of these things that took place, but also the multitudes are thousands and thousands of people that were affected by the ministry of John. They came down, or they, they realized that John, the, the average person realized that Jesus was a, uh, the, the Messiah uh, later on, but also at this time, they, the average person realized that John the Baptist was a prophet. And actually, he's the last of the prophets uh, the Old Testament prophets, that's uh, John the Baptist, is the last of these. And he has a ministry of evangelism. He, uh, the people in Israel, they claimed to worship the God of heaven, but they had gotten away from him in many ways. And so John goes out and preaches to them um, the message of repentance now some people say well we don't need repentance today we don't even need to talk about that it just we just need to believe in the lord jesus christ well i disagree with that i believe all if you look you'll see paul preached repentance uh, all of them preached repentance and uh, the, yes there are times that uh like the philip Philippian jailer, and when they when he asked, what must I do to be saved? Paul didn't have a chance to talk to him about all the details, but the most important thing was he believed on Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, so he did. But as far as <clears throat> salvation, it is we need to turn from our sin. That's what repentance means, to turn. Uh, and so turn from our sin and turn to Christ to save us. And so John was preaching that in the wilderness by the Jordan River, up and down the Jordan River. Uh, the Jordan River is very cold. If you decide to be baptized, <laughs> you really mean business for the Lord. That's where I was baptized. All right, verse 7. <clears throat> then he said to the multitudes, they came out, thousands and thousands of people came out to be baptized by him. 
brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the wrath to come. He didn't mince any words. He just told the truth. He just said what God had said for him to say, what the Holy Spirit had told him to say. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. And um, one of the things that uh, it's very wonderful for me in my life is to be able to share the word on uh, the internet like this because I don't have to worry about, well, I wonder in the church if if I'm going to offend people to say this. Uh, I wonder if I will, uh, some people leave the church if I speak up on this. And I will tell you that uh, I'm not just making that up, but some people, when they hear the word like this, even now, when I share just exactly what I believe the word is saying and I don't compromise the word, there's people that leave. Uh, we have uh, how many that, you know, say that they like us and so on on the and Facebook and that, but that goes up and down depending on the subject that I talk about. But you know what? That doesn't bother me because I'm just going to share the gospel message, the whole message, the, the full gospel, and let you know what it has to say. And then I'll let the chips fall where they fall. Well, that's the way John the Baptist was. I can't say that I'm as brave as he, he was. In fact, we're going to see how that he even talked to Herod and told him something that he needed to do to get right with God. But verse 7 says, Then he said to the multitudes that came out to be baptized by him, Brood of vipers. So he didn't try to win friends and influence people. He said, Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? <clears throat> Hello, Esther. The Lord bless you, sister. They're in India. Verse 8. Therefore, here, therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. And if you're truly saved, you will turn from your sins and turn to the Lord to save you. Now, I have to say something because there are so many people that uh, they wonder about, well, once saved and always saved, and uh, can you lose your salvation, that sort of thing. People, it's not as cut and dried as what you think. There, as Jesus talked about the parable of the sower, as the sower went out and the seed uh, started to grow and so on. Well, there are some that uh, people that they get emotional when they think about eternity, about their sin and so on. And it's maybe just an emotional experience. There are people that have a head experience. <laughs> uh, they are um, uh, figuring this out, and as you think about it and so on, uh, Jesus is historical, and our, and we understand that. And, uh, and so they uh, just threw their head, they had knowledge. But it never gets actually from here down to their heart. Uh, you have people that when they, they're thinking, oh, uh, they're told, uh, like the Word of Faith people, that you get saved and you will become rich and you everything will be wonderful. You'll never get sick again. You'll never have any troubles again. You'll never be persecuted. Well, is that of God, what they're teaching? No, that's not the Word of God. That's not what it teaches, and that's wrong. And so I speak out against it. Anytime I see something that I believe is, I know is wrong, I will speak out against it. I've run into these people firsthand. So I know what they believe, okay? And then, uh, so they're here. It has to be, if you are truly born again, and I was saved even as nine, but I will tell you that I know that I asked forgiveness for my sins and asked God to forgive me, and invited him to come into my heart and life. My altar was my bed uh, where my parents led me to the Lord right there. 
I was at a church service and it was in the evening, which after my parents got saved, uh, they started taking us in church and uh, Sunday school instead of sending us only. But it was evangelists speaking on the subject of hell. How often do you hear people speaking on hell today? And so then I was cut to the quick, even as nine years old. I knew I was a sinner. I knew I didn't want to go to that place, but I was too afraid to go forward. So when I got home, my parents, I asked them to show me how I could know that I was going to heaven, and they did. And part of that was repenting of my sins. In other words, even at nine years old, I knew that I had sinned, and I received Jesus into my heart and life. Uh, hello, Pastor Emmanuel. And so I, I felt like something... Uh, like Pilgrim's Progress, where there was something heavy on my back. I had not even read Pilgrim's Progress, didn't know anything about it, but I got up on the bed and started jumping up and down as nine years old because I felt my sin had rolled away. I knew that I had been born again. I knew that I was on my way to heaven. And so that is what was happening here. Revival was breaking out, thousands and thousands of people. Now, when they show these things on a video and so on, you can't show these many pe that many people. It's really impossible. They'd have to hire how many extras, and you can't do that. But And so we just need to know that uh, when it says multitudes, that's thousands of people were getting right with the Lord. There was tremendous revival taking place. So much so, the religious leaders even came out who were uh, atheists and who were... Uh, hating God and in their hearts and so on. And uh, and so they came out to mock. But anyway, and you see that in Matthew as well. So there, therefore, he said, bear fruits worthy of repentance. If you're repenting of your sin, then your life is going to change. If your life doesn't change, you need to say, oh, I can still be a homosexual. I can still be this, that, and the other thing. I can still be stealing some from my work and that sort of thing. No, then you're not truly saved. You need to get saved. You need to repent of your sin. Turn to Christ to save you. And do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. That's what they would, uh, uh, the Jewish people, and when Jesus was talking to them, we have Abraham as our father. Well, so what? You're a sinner on your way to hell. And it doesn't matter if you're Jewish or if you're Chinese or what you are. You need to repent of your sin, turn to Christ to save you. And uh, the Jewish people needed to do that as well. And that's what John the Baptist is talking about. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. <clears throat> that's the same type of thing that Jesus said when the religious leaders came to him and said, Talk to, stop the children from saying uh, Hosanna the highest. And, and like, well, because Jesus claimed to be the Messiah, he was the Messiah, whether they liked it or not. You see, God doesn't ask you, is it all right? No, he doesn't ask. He does what he's going to do. Verse 9. And even now the axe is laid at the root of the trees. And that was true even three years before Jesus would be crucified. These people, uh, the religious leaders, they were hardened in their hearts toward God. They did not believe what they were teaching. They were hypocrites, just like Jesus said. Therefore, Every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. What do you think happened in 70 AD when they rejected the message of Jesus as the Messiah? The nation did. All of Jerusalem was surrounded by Titus, a Roman leader, and they besieged it. And then they killed over a million people, men, women, and children. Why? Because they, the leaders had deliberately uh, chosen not to receive their Messiah. 
And they said, the people that agreed with that said, let his blood be on our hands and on our children. Well, that is what happened when they didn't receive the true message of salvation as Jesus as the Messiah. So the people asked him, saying, what shall we do? But the average person wanted to know how they could be saved, how they could go to heaven. He answered and said to them, He who has two tunics. So if you've received the Lord, you're repentant of your sin, you've been baptized here. All right. Here's what you do. If you have two sets of clothes, let him give to him who has none. And he who has food, let him do likewise. So share what you have with others. All right. Then the tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? All right. And those were Jewish people that had signed on with Rome to collect money from the uh, people. But a lot of times they would uh, overestimate the taxes and so they could have the extra. Uh, they would give more than... Oh, they would require more than what was really needed by, for the government, and they would save the extra for themselves. And he said to them, Collect no more than what is appointed for you. All right. Verse 14. Likewise, the soldiers asked him, saying, And I can identify with this. And what shall we do? So he said to them, Do not intimidate anyone or accused falsely. Now, the, the soldiers, when they weren't at war, were with the people. They were like police officers. Um, and so they were around people. And so do not intimidate anyone or accuse falsely and be content with your wages. All right, just live the way you're supposed to and don't complain about the wages that you're getting, which usually for soldiers is not very much. Now as the people were in expectation and all reasoned in their hearts about John, whether he was Christ or not. So they're thinking that maybe John is the Messiah. John answered saying to all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. He didn't know exactly when he would appear on the scene. Had never actually met Jesus even though he was a relative, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. They wore sandals in those days, and a a servant would take your sandals off and wash your feet. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So John is baptizing with water, but he says the one that comes after him would baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire, which we see on the day of Pentecost, but we also see fire as a judgment. And uh, his winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor. All right, he's going to clean out anything, any sin, and uh, so on. And this goes all the way down to the thousand-year millennial reign of Christ, and how he cleans house in the tribulation time before he comes back and gather the wheat into his barn. So uh, those that are truly born again, those that are truly living for the Lord, even uh, at that time, in our time, and in the future. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So the chaff is thrown up into the air and blows away, but it blows into a pile And they started on fire. And with many other exhortations, he preached to the people. The chaff in the fire would be like going to hell. Okay, and there will be fire, eternal fire there. Okay, verse 19. But Herod the Tetrarch, being (laughs) rebuked by John the Baptist, uh, because he had taken his brother's wife. And she was a wicked woman, too, and uh, had uh, John the Baptist beheaded, remember, and her daughter also. 
but uh, John the Baptist had told them that um, first that before they even threw him in jail that he uh, Herod needed to repent of his sin of taking his brother's wife and uh, rebuked by him concerning Herodias okay his brother Philip's wife and for all the evils which Herod had done and there were many also added this above all that he shut up John in prison and then of course if Matthew will see how that John was beheaded uh, by him. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized while he prayed. The heaven was open and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him and a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved Son, and you I am well pleased. Now, here we see the Holy Trinity, all three at once, okay? Because Jesus is in the water, being baptized. The Father is, well, the Holy Spirit comes down on Jesus like a dove. It doesn't say he is a dove, but he appears like a dove um, several times and he lands on Jesus but it's like he uh, stays on him in other words uh, he was filled by the Holy Spirit in his ministry to the fullest and then you have the Father speaking out of heaven uh, you are my beloved son and you I am well pleased. So the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one. And we need to keep that in mind. And now it's hard to understand, except that you can think about it a little bit. You are three in one. You have a body, soul, and a spirit. All right. And maybe it's hard for us to understand that, but that's what the Word of God teaches. So you are three in one. But when you get to heaven, when we get to heaven, I don't know that we'll see the Father totally revealed in all his glory. We will see the glory of the Lord, the Father. But, and if we do, we will see that he is exactly like the Son, except that the Son has taken on a body and is in a glorified body. And we will definitely see Jesus there in heaven, worship him. And uh, also the Holy Spirit, we, we will see him as uh, possibly as a dove or even as a person. He is a person. He, uh, he is a he. <laughs> And but they're all three together as one. And this is what we see when Jesus is being baptized. And that must have been amazing for the people that were standing about them. All right, let's get back to verse three now. Now Jesus himself began his ministry at about 30 years of age. You know, uh, maybe it wasn't the exact day, but he, of his birthday, but he was right at about 30 years old when he started his ministry, okay? Uh, being as was supposed, and these are a comment that's put in here, the son of Joseph, okay? The son of Hiel. Um, Hiel would be um, the father of Joseph, be Mary's uh, father-in-law, okay, and uh, so we need to understand something about this genealogy. I did, I did mention it at the beginning, and I studied this in great detail. Trust me, and uh, even last night I spent probably maybe an hour or longer yesterday studying into this. Oh, it was 
yesterday morning, I believe. But as, uh, because we had uh, Labor Day, but as I've studied it, and uh, I've always uh, recently come to the conclusion, as many others have studied it in great detail, if you study Matthew's genealogy, that is about Joseph. You say, well, Joseph is not Jesus' father. No, but he, even if it was in a legal term, he would be considered the, um, Jesus would be like the adopted son of Joseph, even if you looked at it in that way. So through the line of Joseph, which goes back to Abraham and Matthew, uh, you will see, and it goes through David, you had to be the son of David, it goes starting there and goes through down to uh, Joseph, all right? But as we know, Jesus was not born of Joseph, he was born of the Father. And so the genealogy that we have here in Luke, because remember, Matthew covers Jesus as the King, the Messiah, and the um, Matthew as the Lion, the tribe of Judah, whereas Luke is picturing Jesus, the theme of Luke is Jesus the perfect man. And so in this genealogy, and uh, sometimes I just skipped over genealogies. In fact, last year, I think when I taught through Luke, I think I just skipped over it, not sure. But the thing is, uh, the more I think about it, the more important it is to show to the Jewish people that Jesus is truly their Messiah. And so through Mary, the genealogy, which uh, Jesus was truly human and truly God, totally God and totally man, one day in a Bible study, a guy said, Jesus was half man and half God. No, he was totally God and totally man. And so in order to go back and Jesus' humanity and Luke, Jesus being the perfect man, you go all the way back to Adam, who is the son of God. And because uh, God created him. And so Jesus is also the second Adam. He is the son of God. And we see that here. Uh, so it goes back to show his father and uh, Mary. And then he is the seed. Jesus is the seed of, of Mary, uh, the seed of the woman. And uh, so... He has no sin nature. And that is something very important to understand. Jesus did not have a sin nature. Now, he was tempted in every way as we are, but we have a sin nature. We've been born again, yes, and we're to reckon that our old nature is crucified, the sin nature, but we still have that sin nature. Jesus did not have a sin nature. Now we're going to read the genealogy, and I'll do the best I can to pronounce the names, but I think it is important to read it and to realize that this is going back from Mary uh, all the way back to the beginning, to Adam, because Jesus is the Son of Man as well as the Son of God. So we go to verse 23 there, and the, it says... Uh, so, uh, you would start uh, as was supposed. So, he would uh, was considered the adopted son of Joseph, but he's really Mary, uh, Mary's uh, son, the son of Joseph, the son of Heel, Heli. Um, and so, realizing that we're going back through the all the way back to the beginning, the son of uh, Matheth, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of Hannah, 
the son of Joseph, the son of Mathathathan, the son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of Esli, the son of Nagi, the son of Mathat, the son of Mathathathan, uh, boy, the son of uh, Simei, the son of Joseph, the son of Judah, the son of Jonas, the son of Rahas, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Shetiel, the son of Neri, Neri uh, the son of uh, Melchai, the son of Okay, Adai, the son of Kos, um, the son of Eladon, the son of Ur, the son of Jose, the son of uh, Eliezer, Eliezer, okay, the son of Joram, the son of Mathath, the son of Levi, the son of Simeon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph, the son of Jonan, the son of Elikim, the son of Mel Ai, uh, the son of mm, Menon, the son of Mattatha, the son of Nathan, the son of David, that's important there too, the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Boaz, the son of Salom, the son of Nashon, the son of Amenadad, the son of Ram, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahor, the son of Serug, the son of Ru, the son of Peleg, the son of Eber, the son of uh, Shelah, the son of Canaan, the son of Arphaxad, the son of Shem, uh, through Shem, uh, through in the flood, Shem, um, Ham, and then uh, Japheth and the Shem, this, he came through the line of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lemek, the son of uh, Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahaliah, the son of Canaan, the son of Enish, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. And so, uh, again, pardon me for not pronouncing all those correctly. Uh, there are uh, some Hebrew names and they're transliterated into English and and uh, so but if we see again it goes back to Adam the son of God Jesus is the second Adam he had God as his father Mary as his mother Mary was a virgin when she had Jesus and so Jesus does not have the sin nature, but he has the human nature through Mary. And uh, so he is called the son of God and the son of man. All right, let's go to um, prayer. And uh, let's think about the uh, needs around the world. Think about in Israel and how that some of the hostages have been killed again at this time of this Bible teaching. And uh, others are still alive as far as we know. So we'll continue to pray as long as uh, uh, there are hostages and as long as Israel's fighting. So we're gonna pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We're gonna pray that uh, people around the world that are suffering for the Lord, uh, in many countries that we'll pray for them. We'll pray for you. Uh, we'll pray for ourselves. And let's do that right now. 
Father, we just come to you now in Jesus' name alone. Thank you for your word. Thank you that it is all true to the nth detail and that you are fulfilling it even during our times. We pray for Jerusalem, the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for those who are suffering for you around the world. And Father, we do pray for any that are sick, that are having uh, the listening to this Bible study, even if it's not now, it's a time later, whenever we know that you can heal and you still do heal when we call upon your name to heal us. So we thank you for that. We pray for those that financially they have needs. Meet their needs, we pray. Pray, to, Father, that you'll help us all to be uh, having much fruit in our lives and sharing the gospel with people. We pray all these things with thanksgiving in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right. The Lord bless you, brothers and sisters in Christ, and we'll see you tomorrow, God willing. All right. Shalom.